All right, it's time for reading and watching. I don't have a watching card. Shakespeare with Henry V. Ah, uh, ba ba ba. So this is the hollow crown version of Henry V that I'm going to be talking about. I'm actually going to be talking about a couple of versions. Sorry. Uh, and this is the play by Shakespeare. It is the last in the first history tetralogy. So the first four histories. This is the last one, Richard II, Henry the Fourth, Part One and Two, and then we have Henry V. Um, so finally made it. It took me a long time to end up uh, watching this one. I think I got a little burned out by the, the other two Henrys. And I actually read it in my <laughs> huge, huge um, complete works of William Shakespeare. And so yeah, that was a challenge. And it's weird because normally I do, I have little index cards for each of the characters. And after I read a scene, I write on the back of them anything significant for the particular characters. I didn't do that this time around. I have been having a little trouble with my hands uh, for the past while and I needed to not be writing, typing, knitting, arting as much as I normally do. So I thought given that um, this is one of the plays that I know a little bit better. I've seen the Kenneth Branagh version. I've seen the Sir Lawrence Olivier version. I've seen the episode of Star Trek Gen The Next Generation that references it. Like there's a couple of big sort of things in this one that are referred back to again and again. So I thought, well, that's okay. I'll just, I'll just read it. And then just really didn't retain that much from reading it. Um, I got that this one's okay. So this vlog is going to be very, I'm going to talk about the plot. So um, pretty heavily. So if that's a spoiler, <laughs> now you know, uh, but that's how I feel like it's the most, uh, you know, that's the most relevant way to talk about it, especially in particular this play, because I had a lot of challenges with it, because when I just read it, I could tell that what was going on was Henry V, who we've seen through the Tetrology go from being um, a young prince that just sort of like hung out in the pub to becoming more responsible and going off into battles with his father to eventually taking the crown and becoming king and renouncing his boyhood, you know, East cheap ways. And so in this one, we started like he is the king. And I don't know how much time has passed between the last one and this one. And this one's very different from Richard II in terms of the series, because we actually watch the same actor, Tom Hiddleston, play the character for the for three of the films. And then a lot of the supporting characters are have are played by the same actors again and again. So this one feels much conti more continuous. It feels like the third of three as opposed to the fourth of four, because there's no carryover Richard II uh, to Henry the Fourth Part One in terms of, of actors. It's just historically, that's what happened. Anyway, so this one, I just, oh my gosh, I wanted to like it. I wanted to love it. It's really not what happened. From reading it, I could, I could get that what happened was, you know, Henry decides to invade slash claim France. There is war, you know, the English win. He marries the French princess. That's what I got from reading it, which is not a lot. Um, but like, the, like it's hard because I know that the really, really key elements of this one, this is one that is very war focused. A lot of the other ones have battles and stuff like that, but it's really like fight and sword, sword, and that's about it. This one, the bulk of it, they are really at war. Um, and uh, there's a couple, there's a couple of rousing, there's one really rousing speech, like the once more into the breach is from this play. Um, and that, and it's a huge, 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 like, you know, uh, the English end up having almost no losses and then the French have thousands. And I'm just like, is that really historically accurate? <laughs> like, is it like 24 to like thousands? But anyway, I'm not a history person, so I don't know. And I didn't look it up and that on me, but I think it's close. Um, but because that's sort of one of the really things that centers this one. And so this rousing speech, and it's a big role for an actor to get this one. As I said, I've seen the Laurence Olivier version. I've seen the Kenneth Branagh version. There are um, play versions where Ian Holm has played the character. Timothy Dalton has played the character. It's a big role. So to get to see Tom Hiddleston, like I was really excited. But to be honest, I, I wasn't getting it. Like I literally, I'm like, this is the scene. This is the big scene where he inspires anyone and I'm everyone and I'm not getting it. And that was just like, 
And then there's another really big scene. This is the one that's also in Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, and it is where King Henry poses as a common soldier and goes amongst his men. And I, from reading it, I couldn't pick out, like I could pick out the scene that this was happening, but not what the point of view is because Shakespeare can be interpreted, you know, many different ways. Um, but I remember it from uh, some of the other versions I'm seeing, saw, and I just remember being so amazed by that scene, like this idea of being able to find out, you know, what the regular people, uh, what the regular soldiers were feeling and thinking. That's the impact I had from it. But with this one, I'm like, I can't figure out what he's trying to do. And it also felt way less possible in this series because you see him in the first two parts of Henry the Fourth at the pub. Like, I know not every person that is like, you know, <laughs> at war was at the pub, but it's like, we've seen him amongst the regular people. So to see him here, it's like, yeah, he's wearing a hood and whatever, like this particular person we've never seen him talk to before. It just didn't have the impact that it had in the other uh, other productions. And then I also, again, I wasn't sure what was going on, you know? Was he trying to get, was it reconnaissance, you know, like in a positive way? Because it really felt like the other people were talking about how, you know, King Henry's all high and mighty and he doesn't care about anyone else. And, you know, and that's not really true, but I couldn't, the scene just wasn't gelling for me. And then it, they re refer back to it later in, um, in the play, in the production, you know, because he meets the guy that he talked to as a commoner and it's this very powerful moment, but powerful in what? Like, I just felt like the guy felt threatened. And I'm like, is that what I'm supposed to be getting? You know, he talked to this guy, he didn't know he was king, he finds out he's king, now he thinks the king's gonna kill him. That's what I got. I don't really feel like that's the message after they've won this big battle and not had as many losses and totally decimated the French or I don't know. So that was really frustrating. It just, I just really wanted to love it. I really wanted to love it. And I just found it so challenging on so many ways in the fact that I couldn't understand what was going on. And I'm like, I actually know this story pretty well. But in the scene, it's like, what's going on? Like, even when, you know, his Henry's, um, you know, uh, council basically tells him to, hey, go get France. We're, we're allowed to have it. Go get it. You know, and I'm like, these are all people that like betrayed him. Are, are they doing that now? Are they not? Is this in service of the country? Is this in service of themselves? I have no idea <laughs> at all. And then I felt like they're not. I felt like this is the, a positive thing for them. And then when I read up about it, it sounds like some of them really were in league with the French. And I feel like... <laughs> don't really have any sense of that at all. Anyway, I did find that there were some highlights. There were two actors, three actors that I really loved in this. Tom Brick, Brooke, who played Corporal Nim, was excellent. Small role, wonderful role. I just, oh, he's in Preacher as Fiore. I, I don't watch Preacher, so I don't know if that helps people know who he is. Um, and also Patterson Joseph as York. Fabulous presence, fabulous presence, especially in the first half of the 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 film he was amazing and then a huge highlight was John Hurt as the narrator just love John Hurt like <laughs> like for me he'll always be Kane from from Aliens but in this one because he was narrating it was a voiceover he kind of felt like he was the dragon in Merlin <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of weird he has such a wonderful voice though and he is a wonderful actor and it was really really great to have him be a part of this production I really appreciated that so much and I like overall I gotta say I wasn't that impressed with Tom Hiddleston in this in each in each of the three parts of this that he's in there's always been a couple of scenes that he's been just extraordinary in and in this one what it was was there was a scene with him where he basically woos Catherine, um, who is the princess of France, and it's like, ah, here we are, here we are, this moment, this moment was worth, well, like, it was worth it, like, it was so wonderful, I just, I just wish I, like, it was like that for all of it, but just that scene was amazing, and it makes up for the totally stupid, like, okay, that's, that's a little rude, the totally, I felt like throwaway scene where Catherine's in it earlier where she's talking to her maid or nurse or whatever and they're speaking in, almost entirely in French for the entire time and talking about 
different, you know, parts of the body and what their English term is, dwa, finger, all this stuff and getting it wrong and accents and all this stuff. And I'm just like, wow, even when I was reading it, I'm like, is this a mistake? This is all in French. Who's going to understand this? Like, I'm Canadian. I've been taking, like, I started taking French when I was in grade three. Normally it's grade nine, but anyway, or seven, depends on the school and all that stuff. And of course, in Quebec, you know, it's always. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's English schools too. Anyway, I'm just saying, you know, for me, I could understand the scene because I understand my comprehension of French was good enough to figure it out. But generally, I don't know. Anyway, so overall, I have to say I was kind of disappointed. I And I really want to go back and watch some of the other versions of the play just because I feel like this is one that it's like, ah, oh, it's so good. And I just wasn't feeling it this time. Or maybe just thematically, it doesn't speak to me as it once did. And I don't know. So I gotta say, it's a bit of a letdown that that's the final one in the Hollow Crown for this version. They have announced that the Hollow Crown is going to be doing another, the other uh, history tetralogy. They're only doing three, though. They're doing Henry VI, part one and two skipping number three and then going to Richard II and they're going to be airing that on PBS in December. So I am planning, even though I felt like with this it was kind of hit and miss, I am planning on uh, reading the plays so that I can watch them and then I am, but next up, next up for Shakespeare, I'm going to go with King Lear because it's one that I've never, I don't think I've ever read or seen or I might have seen it with my sisters, I'm not sure. It involves sisters and I'm really, really curious about that one. And the CBC has a Stratford production available to watch on their app for free. And I am not going to miss out on that. They also have Taming of the Shrew and Antony and Cleopatra. But I'm starting with King Lear because it's the one that I'm most interested in. Anyway, overall, not like, sadly, not that awesome. But you know, what can you do? I would recommend, as always, to re to check out the Shakespeare uh, with puppets <laughs> with Henry V. It was very enlightening <laughs> and just helped so much in understanding the general plot. And I will put the link to her channel and that video below because it is always such a treat to be able to go and watch that after I read the plays and be like, oh, that's what it's about. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching.